Watson. This is the second time I've watched London burn. It's not safe by the window, sir. Right, sir. I'll say goodnight now. Uh, wait, please. How are you taking dictation, Miss Hudson? I do all right, sir. Though I can't vouch for my spelling. I fear I haven't much time left in this world. There is something I feel should be recorded. I'll transcribe it for you. Is this one of your fantasy stories? I, I kept this story out of the journals in deference to his wishes. Not only because of how it personally affected him, but because he felt the public was not ready to hear this. He was a man of many talents and a good friend. We shall record the chronicle of his greatest and least known accomplishment. Dr. Watson, who is he? strange occurrences. Something coming towards us. There's something there! No! There it is! Coming towards us! No! It's you, it was, it was coming straight towards us! So take cover! What was it? It's nothing.
Good morning, Mr. Leggett. Ha! Ah, there you are. Holmes! You scared the life out of me. What is it? It's ten o'clock and our train for New Haven leaves in twenty minutes. Train? What are you talking about? I have a letter from Scotland Yard. It seems a treasury ship has gone down in the channel. Under most mysterious circumstances. Holmes, I couldn't possibly go to New Haven. I have an autopsy to perform. The inquest is tomorrow and I need to determine the cause of death. Come, Watson. Perfectly obvious this man succumbed to mercurialism. How could you possibly know that? It's elementary. My initial impression came as I entered the room and was immediately bombarded by the distinct odour of fish. Cod, I think. Yes, yeah, certainly something in the Gadide family. And as I'm well accustomed with your personal fastidiousness, I quickly ascertained that you were not the source of the redolence, and I turned my focus to the decadence on your table. Of course, my first assumption was that this was a fisherman who drowned. But I changed my opinion when I examined his hands. Although these are a working man's hands, they lack the thick calluses caused by lifting heavy fishing nets. However, you'll notice that the left thumb and the fingertips are covered with very old scars. Pulled by a small serrated blade and owned many years ago as he learned his trade. Fishmonger. You have been paying attention. Ah. I then noticed a slight swelling and a pink discoloration on the toes and the cheeks. Hmm, yes, as I suspected, very few teeth. My hypothesis was further buttressed by his moustache, which, as you can see, is thickly matted with dried saliva, consistent with another symptom of the malady, tylism. These bruises on the hips, knees and shins betray a loss of coordination as the disease progressed to the inevitable stage of sensory impairment. These facts, along with years of exposure to, and I suspect almost, Exclusive subsistence on seafood, as is typical in his profession, makes my diagnosis of mercury poisoning very nearly indisputable. Sometimes you make me wonder why I spent seven years in medical school. Knowing you, I suspect it had something to do with impressing a woman. Well, yes. Our train leaves in less than 15 minutes. Your dissection of Mr. Leggett will have to wait for our return. Wait! How did you know his name? It's written on his chart. Come, Watson. The game's afoot. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. It's a pleasure to see you again, Inspector Lestrade. You remember my associate, Dr. Watson? I insisted there was no need to call any amateurs. But apparently the Commissioner thought you might be some help. I must admit, we've got a real mystery on our hands here. And frankly, I'm at a loss to explain it. There's a surprise. Please lay out the facts of the case as plainly as you can, Inspector. Last night, the Royal Treasury Sloop, HMS Coronet, sank in the channel. The weather? Clear. It's not a cloud in the skies. Engine explosion? No, she was running on sails. And what was her cargo? The Queen Shilling. She carried only tax monies collected in the West Indian colonies. And the survivor? Ah, oh, yeah, Midshipman Styles, but I don't think he's going to be much use. I mean, he's been in a coma since they brought him in, the poor man. I'm afraid there's not much more to report. Oh, by the way, the Commissioner sends his regards to your brother, and we're all pleased to hear that his condition is improving. I'm sorry? Inspector, Mr Giles has come around, but there's something wrong with him. I think he's gone mad. Good afternoon, Mr. Styles. Friendly. Right, I'll have a quick look at you. If everything's working properly. It's like a bit cold, I think. <laughs> what happened last night, Mr. Styles?
Attention. Aye, sir. Report, Mr. Stiles. I was standing guard on the forecastle about midnight, sir. Go on. And I saw what looked like a light. 200 yards off the starboard bow. What happened next? It seemed to be on a ramming course. And then it disappeared under the hull. Yes. Then it seized Lieutenant Fowler and pulled him overboard. Seized him how? With his arms, sir. Mm -hmm. It had arms. As long as masts. Black as the devil. Then those vicious arms coiled themselves around the ship like serpents. I climbed as fast as I could up the shroud. But it pulled the ship down. All the way down into the water. And all my mates, every one of them, drowned or crushed by the monster. Your diagnosis, Doctor? Well, the chap's got a bit of bruising, but other than that, a fine state of health. What do you make of his story? Madness. He suffered a deeply traumatic shock which has manifested itself in a state of delusion. So you don't believe him? Surely you're not taking him seriously, Holmes. As a midshipman first class, Mr. Stiles has likely lived before the mast since he was 12 years old. I'm inclined to take seriously the account of such a veteran seaman. Really, Holmes? Sea monster? I believe that Mr. Stiles is convinced he saw such a creature. And you? I should like to see this ship for myself. Mr. Lees, isn't it? How much longer? Not too far now. Lestrade, you mentioned my brother earlier. To what exactly were you referring? He contacted me recently. Wanted to catch up. Yeah. Bit of a shock, that was. I mean, I don't think I've heard from him in... Seven years. Like he'd fallen off the face of the earth. Surely he contacted a family. He was embarrassed by his weakened state. Nothing wrong with that. Injured in the line of duty. Injured? He was paralysed. Bloody thieves. That man's a hero, if you ask me. I don't think he sees it that way. I can't see it. That is why I requested for Lees to bring a great deal of strong rope for our excursion today. If one were harnessed and lowered down, one should get a view of the ship. Holmes. I really think you ought not to do this. Well, of course I shouldn't. You should. I? You're the former military man. I was an army surgeon. Come, Watson. I couldn't deny your moment of heroism. This shit old. Wind's picking up. Then time's off the essence.
Is everything all right? I think he's okay now, sir. I think he's ready to come up now, sir. Well, what did you see down there? Nothing. Nothing. It's an empty ship. Well, there's nothing, nothing more to see here. You may be able to make the 7 o'clock train back to London. Whilst we made our way back, night was falling upon the slums of London's East End. I wanted to, um... Are you Miss... Pinchcock? Aye, and what's your name, love? John. Is it now? Yes, it is. Well, then. Come with me, John. Uh, 
How much, Mum? Six pence. Six pence? I guarantee I'm worth every penny. Oh, oh no, I wasn't implying. It's just that uh, I've only got three on me. Fine, give it to me. Never seen one before, Nug. It's not that funny. What? Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Would you gentlemen like anything else for breakfast this morning? I'm fine with this scone, thank you. No, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Are you still cross with me because of yesterday? say, Watson, that sometimes you behave just like a child. And you behave just like an ass. Come, Watson. What's in the news? Only Lestrade seeking publicity. You know, I doubt he could solve a cryptic without a dictionary. Lestrade's competent enough. He mainly lacks imagination. You're far too generous, Holmes. Perhaps I do have a soft spot for Lestrade. He worked with an old relative. What else is in the paper? <sighs> Sensationalist claptrap. Hmm. Read it to me. Monster attack in Whitechapel. Sally Fassbinder, one of the unfortunate women who ply their trade in the East End. A prostitute? I know what it means. Sure you do. Miss Fassbinder witnessed the fatal attack on Mr. John Poole, a Gresham Street bank teller, by a creature with glowing eyes and phosphorus breath. This is preposterous. Go on. Local citizens have reported a number of sightings of the beast in and around factories of Whitechapel. What do you make of it? Mass hysteria as a result of criminality and the deplorable social standard in the slums. So you still don't believe in monsters? The only monsters I believe in look very much like you or I. Quite so. Well, I'm off. My morning constitutional. Mm. I'll come with you. I've never known you to exercise. You still haven't. Out of tobacco. Any conclusions about the coronet case, Holmes? Not yet. Although I'm beginning to observe a pattern. Seems weaker than usual. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, Holmes. Not everything's a clue. Watch yourself. I'm 
seen it in the streets. It's in the woods. It's in the woods. It's in the streets. Watch yourself. There's, there's no one to hide. There's no one to hide. There is bushes. It's in the woods. It's in the streets. Watch yourself. Damn newspaper. They have that poor man believing the Hawkins dinosaur is real. I tell you, tomorrow there'll be people seeing goblins and dragons and God knows what else. It's reprehensible, really. Watson. to believe. Don't move. Oh, Lestrade. Lestrade, it's, it's me. Watson. 
What are you doing here? Lower your pistol, Inspector. I can assure you the doctor's harmless. What did this? Well, you wouldn't We were that, wondering so. the same ourselves. We were taking our early morning constitutional when we heard a great ruckus and came to investigate. Yes. What are you doing here, Inspector? Same as you. What of it? This wouldn't have anything to do with a coronet case, would it, Holmes? Not that I can tell, Lestrade. Yeah, well, you tell me if you make any headway. I better report this mess. Why didn't you tell him? Tell him what? What we saw. And what exactly did we see, Doctor? Well, it was a... it was a... big... Precisely. I think it's best we keep this to ourselves at present. Hmm. Curious. Do you notice what's missing, Watson? I'm afraid this isn't my area of expertise. Not mine. But a good detective ought to have some rudimentary knowledge of all the sciences. The pump that operated the fountain, it's gone. But what would this creature want with a water pump? What indeed? Perhaps this clue may give us an answer. What's that? I'll know when I have more chance to study it. In the meantime, I'm off to the tobacco shop. Dr. Watson? Yes. Pardon, but there's a patient waiting in examination room three. Very well, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Watson. Anesador Ivory. And this is my uncle. Dr. Watson, it's very kind of you to see us. My pleasure. Hands, cold as ice. Are you unwell? No, she's quite well, Doctor. I am the patient. I need to secure my medications. Of course, let's have a look. <coughs> uh, uh huh. Corticosteroids. Morphine. These are very powerful medications. Indeed, Doctor. I am in a great deal of pain. <clears throat> Please, Doctor, do we look like opium fiends? You do not. Then have mercy on us. I can't stand to see my uncle suffer. I think that's everything. So, when are you off home? The train's to Hell's Mouth are few and far between. We'll stay in London until tomorrow. Oh, really? Well, in that case, I was wondering whether you'd mind accompanying me to the opera this evening. My friend, he's, he's, he's got a box, though, I see. Dr. Watson, you have a call, sir, on the telephone. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. I shan't move a muscle. Watson here. <clears throat> it's Holmes. Isn't this device remarkable, Watson? Can you believe we're speaking over a while? What's the matter, Holmes? Oh, no, my analysis is coming along rather well. Everything's falling into place. Excellent news. Yes, I still have one or two loose ends to tie up, and I'm counting on your services to help bring a successful resolution to the case. Well, my services are yours. Splendid. Meet me in the East End once you're relieved this evening. 
This evening? Yes, and I must warn you. Could be rather dangerous. <laughs> We're at one o'clock. Bethnal Green Road at nine. I'll be there. Uh, and Watson? Bring your service revolver. It's late. We best get home. Well, what has you so frightened? Haven't you heard of the monsters of Whitechapel? Oh, I say, oh, yeah. 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 You reckon they are? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. You reckon they are? Yeah, they are. 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 Yeah, Where did you serve? Afghanistan, sir. 66th Berkshire. Lost me leg in my heights. I was wounded myself in my one. Stingy bastard. I beg your pardon. Oh, Watson, I can still delude you. Holmes, why the theatrics? Because, Doctor, a gentleman like yourself in the East End stands out like a mustard pot in a cold scuttle. Whereas no one takes heed of a destitute invalid, it makes it much easier to discover your information. And what have you discovered? Not much as yet, but I believe it's only a matter of time. Before when? Before we meet another monster. Particular skill. My brother. It was a long time ago. Well, remind me to hide my checkbook. There. So what's this place? Copper factory. These cables are used for telegraph and telephone wire. Oh. Why exactly are we here? Because I believe that this is where the monster was heading before he was interrupted by the cleaver and her customer. What a monster one with copper wire. Because it's an excellent conductor of electricity. Well, yes. And uh, I still don't understand. <laughs> Soon enough, Watson. But for now, we must wait. In darkness, I'm afraid. Taking you to the hospital? Uh, one goes to hospital, one wishes to die. Uh, Mrs. Hudson, please could you get some clean uh, sheets? Uh, 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 don't be a child, Holmes. Oh, don't be an ass! Uh, 
What's the... What's the... No! No, what's the... What's the... Oh, 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 you're an evil man! Sorry, Holmes. I had to make sure there was no glass in the wound. Uh, I was talking about the 71 de V. Oh. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Could you get some boiling water, please? Uh, what's that? Wolfie, the pain. Uh, no, I need to stay... Holmes! <laughs> you don't want me to start suturing without this. Uh, but... Holmes! Uh, 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 should end Good. You're awake. Holmes? Holmes? How are you feeling? Perfect. You did such a good job stitching me up last night, I'm considering dismissing my tailor. Remarkable. Uh, there's tea and toast here. Have some and prepare for an eventful day. Where are we going? I'll explain when we arrive. Give me ten minutes. Uh, Watson, make haste. After the events of last night, time is of the essence. The East End again. Yes, it seems key to solving our little mystery. After the other night, I'm starting to believe the threat we seek is not of this world. No, Watson. The threat we seek is very much of this world. What do you mean? I've completed the analysis of the dinosaur skin I found yesterday. And what was it? Hebe brassulensis. Which is? Rubber. More precisely, rubber from there. Holmes! Good morning, Lestrade. What are you doing here? I was just about to ask you the same. Lestrade, how is it you always just conveniently turn up the crime scene? So, you admit this does have something to do with our case, then? It may, Inspector, it may. One must follow all leads, just as you followed us here. What are you talking about? Come now, Inspector. It rained early this morning, did it not? And as I can see that the mud on your shoe is of the same colour and consistency as a type found only in diverse parts of London, including Baker Street. As I tell no one of our whereabouts, plus the promise of your arrival, leads me to infer that you waited for us outside our home and followed us in the next hansom. No matter, I shall like to focus on what's in the factory. We're not here to buy. We're seeking information about one of your recent customers. I've got loads of customers. You'd remember this one. He didn't come for gummer raises or galishes. He ordered roughly 500 tons and paid in Jamaica gold. I don't have to tell you nothing. Look here, Cocker. I'm a police inspector. Is that right? Then shows your search warrant then. One can easily be obtained, but perhaps you'd be more cooperative if we bring the Labour Commissioner there's also. What are you talking about? I notice how, unlike most of your neighbours, your windows have bars on the inside, which leads me to conclude that, rather than trying to keep someone out, you're trying to keep someone in. Is your workforce made of illegal immigrants? What do you want from me? A name. He never gave me his name. I never even met him. All the instructions came through the post. Splendid. Then we'll take the address where you delivered the purchase. Uh, give me a minute. Not so quick. I'm going with you. Records are in my office. Yeah, well, be quick. I'm right here, make sure you don't do a scoot. Uh. All right, I give up. How did you know about the Jamaica Gold? 
somewhere. What did you find in the hold in the coronet? I told you, nothing. Yes, it should have been filled with the tax revenue from the colonies. I can see no reason why a sea monster would require money. I surmised a man must be behind the attacks. And how did you connect the sea monster to the dinosaur? Only the fact that both are exceptionally improbable. <laughs> Money to buy the dinosaur, and a dinosaur to steal the waterworks. Who is he and why would he want waterworks? I can only answer one of your queries. He needed waterworks to build something bigger. on his tail. What's this place? Halsmouth. Appropriate. Hang on, I've heard of this place. I grew up not far from here. Well, that explains so much. When I was a boy, I had a great interest in petrology. I learned the origin of every stone in this structure. Holmes, Holmes, why are we here? I found a small stone, charnakite, embedded in Mr. Walton's remains. But the only thing on it remained uncharred, suggesting that it must have become attached to him as he was thrown onto the street. This castle is the only place in England that contains 
trying to count to. Watson, look. Don't breathe.
creature for land, creature for sea. So where's... Drop your weapon, if you please. Yes, I Glad to see your skill with the blade has not diminished, Robert. Yet I fear your addiction to tobacco will do you in just the same. Quite as it did our father. Fascinating. Yes, Doctor. Oh, and I should thank you heartily for all your assistance. Corticosteroids. Immunosuppressants. It's not possible. Are you saying you've succeeded in neurotransgeneration? Neuroregeneration. I managed to rewire myelin and neurons from my ruined central nervous system to this device. I control the movements of this synthetic arm with my mind, just as you would move your very own limbs. Only with twice the strength, and of course none of the pain or fatigue. Then why not share your success with the rest of the world? I have spent my life in service to my fellow man. And look what I was given in return. I've no more desire for service or altruism. I will not forgive the country that has so easily forgotten me. I found a new purpose. I am motivated by something far more powerful. The only thing more powerful, in fact, than my love for you, Robert. Revenge. The bullet that laid me low was lodged in my spine for six whole years, hiding its true nature. However, with Miss Ivory's assistance, I was able to remove the offending slug and examine the internal wound. Imagine my surprise upon learning that the shot did not take a direct trajectory, but had instead ricocheted off a doorframe as I rushed into the building. You see, Doctor, I wasn't shot by any 
bank robber. No. I was shot from behind by my very own partner. And then to have to read each day the papers of Lestrade's latest victories. While he is lauded and promoted, even though the credit for solving most of his cases should rightly go to you, Robert. But no more. I will ruin the man who ruined me, alongside this pathetic, <laughs> naive city that adores him so. <laughs> By making the world believe that he is the perpetrator of the greatest crime of this century. <laughs> Brother, I beg you. Oh, Hark, the great Sherlock Holmes. You're always weak to your emotions, brother. He's away. All the better. Would you pass me that, my dear? Don't be fooled by the size of this device, Doctor. I assure you, it is a very powerful explosive. Set the timer, my darling. The train for London leaves in ten minutes. Take it to Waterloo. By the time you reach Buckingham Palace, the bomb will explode. Do you understand? Yes, my love. Now hurry, my dear. You needs must make that train. I suggest you move as little as possible, Doctor. The gyroscopic device you are attached to is designed to pull the chains apart until it tears your limbs from their sockets. However, I should prefer to keep you alive. It may come as no surprise to you that I have continued to follow the career of my late brother with some interest, and have been much impressed, as indeed he was, with your skill in the medical arts. Together, Doctor, we could cure any disease, any injury. Never. So be it. If you remain very, very still, you might just live long enough to watch London burn.
you find it ironically fitting, Inspector, that a city whose symbol is a dragon should ultimately be destroyed by a one? Lose your second most useful organ. Thank God, hopes. Thank God, hopes. Hopes. I'm starting to think you weren't coming. <laughs> ah! God! Good show, man. She, she got you. She got you. Right in your tobacco box. <laughs> and he said my addiction would do me in. So. Sure. Come, Watson. Onwards and upwards. What's the plan? It's more work in progress. My God. You sure this will work? It's only one way to find out. Right. Uh, no, my friend. This is my burden. But, Holmes, I can't... You do what you do best. Go after the woman. Right. Take this. No, I, I couldn't. Holmes, I'll find someone else. I'll see you soon. in your life of crime,
Alter. Mom, it's not safe out here. Mom, didn't you hear me? Go home, it's not safe.
Holmes. I'm sorry about what I did to your brother, mate, but I had no idea. I had no idea. Bloody guns. We should never set eyes on me, Bulldog. Well, me wobbly bulldog, me gun. I thought the force was issued with the Mark once. No, oh, she's a bulldog. The striations on this bullet prove that it came from Mark One. What? You weren't to blame. Lestrade, can you tell me how you stopped the attack? Did you save the Queen? Right. Well, first of all, I'd like to make it clear that I do not consider myself a hero, right? But there was a job to be done, and it fell to me as an officer in a magistrate. Holmes and I never again job. spoke of the events of that night, and to the best of my knowledge, that was the only time I ever knew my friend to fire a gun. It was many weeks later when I remembered to ask him about the name. Robert? My given name is Robert Sherlock Holmes. But who would ever remember a detective called Robert Holmes? What a fantastic tale. Tell me, is any of it true? <laughs> <laughs>